I've got a good one. Have you ever had a conversation with the devil? No. I have. Why? And you're about to. Oh, where is my phony? Oh, wait, there it is. Hello everyone and welcome to the Let's Watch Horror Podcast. This is a Point Five production where we take an indie horror film from an indie horror director and we promote it so you guys can watch it for yourself. Yeah. And we just watched a fucking banger. Oh my god. Yeah, no, an actual, an actual banger-ranger. Such a banger. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this, this, the, like, this one like legitimately smacked us all in the face a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it had Ruby really jumping and also going, yes, when she saw blood and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> now this one comes to us from the same people that brought us glam from our I think our second ever point yeah, five. It was, yeah, it was the second uh, point five we ever did. Yeah, yeah it's like a long time ago now. Yeah, and we knew about this film then, and we managed to hold off it for a while until we could eventually do the point five. Mm-hmm. And then they got back in touch with us and actually let them know that they're releasing it differently this time. It's it's so it came out last year in two thousand eighteen. It had a small theatrical release. Yeah. But now it's been picked up by Wild Eye Releasing and it's coming out on DVD later this year. So it's the perfect yeah. time for us to talk about it and to watch it and just to let you guys know what you're in store for because it, it's fucking awesome. It's a, it's an hour and 40 minutes long. So it's a long film, but it's, it's... Oh, fuck. It's so good. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, like, you, you, we had a... We did pause it for a little bit to sort of have a, have a, have a bit of a toilet break. Was it a toilet break in particular? Mm. And anyway, we, we, we'd like, you, you commented, you were like... Man, has it been 46 minutes already? Because this thing flies yeah. by at, at like a, a, an absolute breakneck pace, man. It's, it's it's properly, properly engaging. There's some genuinely really good atmosphere. Some of the scares are genuinely quite like scary. And you know, I say that as someone that, you know, I'm, I'm a seasoned veteran. I've watched like so many. I mean, you know, I've, I've watched a lot of horror movies, so you get desensitized of things. But there's a couple of scenes in this that are genuinely quite unnerving. It's got a fucking brilliant score. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, no. The, the music in this is is properly cropped, like really eerie. Yeah, before we cover absolutely everything, yeah, in Christ sake, Manny's going on. I do this every single time, but it's hard not to like it just is. blather on excitedly. It about is. I'm this. biting my tongue right now to try and hold it back, but you yeah, know, let's do some. Uh, have you got a? I've got some information that we need right, to go right. through beforehand. So this originally was called Twelve Pole, so some of you may have heard of it, but now it's going to be called Twelve Pole Manor. I don't mm. exactly know the reasons why. But it's, it's, it's yeah, that, that's the name now. So when it comes mm. out on DVD, we 12 pole manor. I can kind of understand that because possibly like when we when you first told us the title 12 pole, like you don't know. I don't know what that means. No one yeah. knows what that means. You know, it's a very abstract name. So I am maybe somewhere along the line. They thought of thought, let's make it a bit more obvious as to what that means. Yeah. But personally, I love the name 12 pole because of that, because it kind of makes you go, oh, I want to find out what that's about. Yeah, it, it's currently uh yeah, I get that. I suppose because it revolves around a house as well. The main thing is is a house. Yeah. And um, one of the cool things about there is actually that so the the filmmakers this house was bought as a as a house. The house we see in the film was bought as a house to do up and have as a horror attraction for Halloween. What IRL? IRL. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 And then they just thought we'll we'll make a horror film as well while we're doing that. And I'm so glad they did. Yeah, no, killing two birds with one stone. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I mean, I'm honestly, like, yeah, if you're if you're gonna have this house as like a proper haunted house style attraction, I mean, it's a, uh, you know, you'd be pretty much sorted. You've got yourself a, a proper good little setting. Obviously, it is very central to the story, like the kind of the. The spirit, like the, the the demon that kind of possesses it, like you know, we, yeah. we sort of can, like and it, it does it does look suitably decrepit. An eerie and kind of like like beat Definitely. up, and you know, I mean, it, 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 it is a classic haunted house sort of fair, but I mean that in like the best way possible. It looks <laughs> it looks really really suitable, and there's a there's a creepy ass tree outside in the back <laughs> garden, and you kind of yeah. you kind of look at it and you think, man, there's definitely corpses buried here. <laughs> you know, what I mean, it'd be weird if there wasn't. Quite this is frankly, definitely on top of an Indian burial ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's classic that, stuff. Classic that. stuff. Shall I give you a back of the box preview? Yes, please. So, so, a group of friends buy a house in Wayne, West Virginia, with the intention of flipping it to make money. 
The problem with this particular house is its unforgiving need for blood. Mm. Yeah. And it's directed by Sam Hodge, so the same director as Glam. He also did the music, he produced it as well as, as along with Travis Robinson. So these guys know what they're doing. And Sam... Some super talented people. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, if you want to try the tackling... Uh... Like the fact that it was directed and, and the music was uh, directed by the same guy. I mean, I don't want to pull out the John Carpenter comparisons too willy nilly, but uh, you know, <laughs> if you're directing it and doing your own score, both to a, a, a high standard, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Then, then uh, fair dues, because I will say it again. The score for me, the score of this was a real high point. Well, here. you you compared it to parts of The Shining. Well, it reminded me of The Shining specifically in the um, the, like I, I always, it always sticks out in my mind in that film how there will be certain scenes where there's nothing immediate, like immediately obvious that's going on in terms that you're meant to be frightened of but there's music the music like the score is like getting really intense and it just makes you really uncomfortable because it, there's like a, a, a deliberate kind of um, it doesn't match up yeah. and, it, like, and it's done to, and there, there was one scene in particular where we get um, oh what is that I'm just the best at remembering character names well so I mean, the, the dude uh, the dude with the chest tattoo that's Will yeah Will that's right when Will was walking out of the house and he's like he's like shirtless and sort of like wandering around in a bit of a daze like the, the music gets super discordant and jangling kind so- of that like, swelling of strings all of a sudden. Yeah, and there's yeah. not there's nothing like immediately which we should be that scared of. I mean, obviously, apart from the fact that Will is uh, incredibly like unhinged mentally mm-hmm. at this point. But that that scene in particular, that 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 use of music really reminded me of The Shining. And yeah, I think... and also um, the film Possum that we did a few weeks ago yeah. as, as a main movie. Like that, they use music in a very similar way. And like you say, that very sort of discordant, super eerie. It just has you on edge. Like even when there's not a particularly a lot of action happening in a particular scene it just really grabs and holds your attention yeah completely and especially for us it's Sunday it's late this is the latest we've ever recorded a podcast (laughs) we kind of just thought we've got to do it we have no days to do it this week and I was feeling like oh please don't be a pooper you know (laughs) please I can't deal with it we're going to be recording this about 10 o'clock at night and we're all busy tomorrow and I, I'm, I'm now awake now. I'm not made to sleep for a little while. <laughs> like, like, there's genuinely scary bits in this, and there's genuine like the gore is amazing. The and we'll gore. get into that. Yeah, no, we mm. will definitely get into but the gore. Just a bit before we get into it as well, I just want to say it's currently sitting at a seven on IMDb, which is fucking amazing for yeah. a horror film, especially an indo- indie horror film. So yeah, yeah, yeah no, it, but this is the thing. It makes sense. I feel as though anybody who has like an interest in indie horror movies and I'm, you know will be able to look at this and appreciate that it is just incredibly entertaining. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it like it, there, there's not a there's nothing boring about it, is there? Really, no. it's, it, it it just kind of it sets you sets everything up quite nicely. We get our characters who are like, you, I mean, you said Ruby, didn't you? Kind of, you kind of like felt for these guys. You know, what I mean, Completely. these dudes. Completely, like I really felt like the main group in this is this group of mates that have bought a house um, with the intention of flipping it to make a profit. Yeah. So there's sort of a group of like slightly. Um, I wouldn't say older gentlemen, like, but you know, they're not they're not kids, they're not teenagers. It's just quite often what we get in horror movies is usually a younger group of protagonists, um, yeah. so a little bit more mature. But I just really felt like they were buddies, you know. They, they, yeah, I, they, they had chemistry. They had so many good scenes that showed that, and they show how they develop. And each character had its own kind of like they had their own different thing they brought to the group, like what a lot of friendship groups have. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got your funny one, you've got your silly one, you've got your kind of like the main boss kind of one or like yeah, the one that's the like the leader the yeah. leader and then you have the guy that's kind of like the leader and he, he, they're, they're both very similar size these guys the beta the, yeah but he's also <laughs> like the one that kind of keeps the calm and he's like very you know and they, they have their little fights but they're apologetic and they get over it yeah. and I think like one thing that is really cool about this is the premise like it's basically a haunted house film yes. Yes. now we get that a lot and you know like it's not, not it wouldn't be the most exciting premise for a lot of horror fans uh-huh. but all, at the same time we all love our ha- haunted house films but this one like you say has a twist straight away it's not like they're not like all turning up like they're pitching tents and getting their beers out and you know having a party it's based around this like business decision yes. that they're having and you're instantly a very believable one it is because yeah you know, definitely like, you know like you see it's, it's, people do it all 
over the world. They uh-huh. buy houses together and they think that they can do them up and sell them on. And I think that that's that's we're we're, we're in that business decision with them and we see them going through it and they all kind of show like whether or not they want to do it and how they feel and it's awesome. It, it really, really is. Sorry, yeah. like I'm gonna struggle. Yeah, no, I'm gonna struggle no, go with that whole back on this because I love so much about this. I really, really do. But coming off of specifically the house buying thing, I made a note specifically of. 24,000 for a house <laughs> like, yeah. because that's not very common especially around our, our parts no not around, around our way that's not very common but like it makes sense why it's that cheap because it's clearly a derelict you know as they call it quite a lot a piece of shit um, yeah. it's completely run down but yeah it, it, it is believable why they're there and that is such an important thing in any movie but in horror sometimes that kind of thing slips by the wayside mm. um, just to let the horror come through but in this it's like I get why they're there it makes sense yeah no completely it also de- like adds as such a such a nice little like place for us to kind of get to know the characters and yes. their dynamic and where, where they're all working together obviously we kind of see like bits of tension like boil up between them even before like the horror mm-hmm. elements have started so we kind of understand their dynamic as people together which you know like it, the, 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 the character like the exposition and the way we learn about the characters doesn't feel forced that way so no. that, I, always, I always appreciate that you know what I mean like when, when you do get some horror movies where it's just like now we're going to show you what the characters are like now we're going to tell you about the plot. Yeah. It's, it, 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 it was a nice situation that it, you like the characters were, were, could almost just end. Uh, they were ended up right in the middle of the plot. It kind of felt natural. So. Yes, and we had a really good intro as well. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Had, like nothing to do with the rest of the plot. Like, there's this guy. We 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 we, do, we don't want to go into spoilers in this one. Sam has specifically asked us. Not to go into spoilers. Oh, I no. know we can no, talk no, about no. some of the deaths, and we can still talk about some of the stuff that happens. But as we've all seen it, we will know what those. Spoilers I completely are. understand why he doesn't want that, and I I am with him hundred percent on that. I wouldn't want to ruin this for anybody. No, no, no. no. It's just going to be hard yeah. because I just want to talk and talk and talk about this movie. But I will try and behave. Well, that's why we'll talk about the intro. Like it, it's it's mm-hmm. really gripping. Like you in you straight away you start seeing someone's head, and you assume that it's like your part. You're playing the part of someone that's being dragged. Yeah. And then, like, dragged from the dark into the light, and you see the person's head again. And then you see this woman just getting strung up. And, like, that's the thing, like, it goes with the practical effects of this film. Like, it looks amazing. It like, really she's does. hung, and it looks so believable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, no, it, it genuinely looks like you're watching a woman actually get yeah, hung. And really that's does. the theme that goes throughout the whole film is this, like, the practical effect. I wish we would have seen this before we did our D- CGI debate because yeah. I would have stuck this right in the foreground of being like practical effects are fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, no, no. O- o- honestly, though, there's a, a yeah a few of the the death scenes uh, throughout the film. Like there's a, there are a few moments and I, I, like I, I'm I'm just going to praise how well it is. I I don't I don't specifically want to want to sort of say any any of the gnarly shit that happens but believe me it does yeah um but all i've got to say is that there are a few moments where it it just looks it looks fucking brilliant it really Um, does there's there's like literal guts getting spilled like there's there's some skull and brain tissue yeah uh, how how these things happen? Uh, we will leave up for the audience to. Uh, the blood is great as the, well. Like, yeah, no, the blood, the blood, blood is not usually as good as this. Like it's so thick and just like. And also, I notice as well that there's like, there's different kind of blood. Like there's the mm. runny blood, but there's also the like wound blood on people's faces, which is like all like stodgy and like starting to go like go <laughs> a little yeah, bit. Yeah, 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 which is super impressive because that's very realistic. Blood mm. doesn't always look the same. You know, it does depend on where it's coming from, how fresh it is, and like how much of it there is, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And so plus, it's it just super lo- realistic. It just looks really aesthetically pleasing. Oh, it's doesn't delicious. It? <laughs> and along with like all the music you get, because there's so much different kind of music. It's not they don't stick to one type. Like, you get a bit of, like, almost, like, electro kind of stuff later on uh-huh. as it all ramps up. And you really do feel like that Sam was building a crescendo here. He was building to Definitely. something big. And by the end, you were just, like, all of us were, like... Well, like, the thing, like, we, we always kind of, like... We, we, we talk through films not in a disrespectful way and just that we're, we're all podcasters together and we have little chats and stuff and we'll be like oh that bit's really cool yeah, oh, yeah. I like that oh the music is oh, great of course, yeah. especially Manny, when we're excited yeah. you can't help and it and Manny said the shining thing during it and we all had to like kind of be like whoa, whoa, whoa before we go into a massive talk about why the shining has great music and so does this guy. shut the fuck up yeah but <laughs> at the end we didn't talk for the whole end sequence because they built it so well we were all like time to shut up now yeah. because we're all and we were all like, <laughs> like I was getting kicked in my ass with like just 
horror and blood and Ruby kept on going, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes me sound like really emotionless and serial killery. It was more like, yes. Because <laughs> that sounds so much less serial killery. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, we're, we're, we're an interesting bunch on this podcast. <laughs> you literally said as we were watching it, like, you'd realise, I think we realised at the same time, like, we've been completely silent for the last ten minutes, and it's only when the real violence goes up and amp, you know, and it's absolutely, <laughs> gets really amped up. But you up, feel but... it, you literally feel like Sam has got his hand on a knob and just turns it up. Yeah. I, I, I'm I such a sucker for that in a uh-huh. horror movie though, where it's just like in the, in the final act like it's going to be like yeah all hell is just fucking broken loose completely and it and it does yeah like, but I like, feel like it you know Sam and the team had a complete mastery over how they were going to execute these ideas that they had because at the beginning we have some real like mood setting establishing shots going on yeah um that they you know it shows a lot of confidence in what they're doing and you know yeah as the time progresses it becomes a bit more manic and a bit more manic more tense more tension until it just explodes and it just shows such a yeah, a mastery over what they were doing. Yeah, they 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 clearly had a like they weren't just like things weren't thrown out willy nilly. It wasn't just like you know we're we're just gonna have this happen and this happen. It was quite clearly yeah, like you were saying, structured in such a way that we get a fair bit of atmosphere first, and then the intrigue is built, and uh-huh. we you know, and then it just slowly, slowly, slowly amps up, and then all of a sudden, bam, yeah. <laughs> straight in the yeah, no, no, I I I I can't. I've got to shut up a little bit because I'm, I'm on the same thing as you. I really 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 want to talk about some of the things that happened in this movie but man it would be doing it such a disservice so <laughs> shut the fuck up now we have our main our main guys that are there we have Will Paul Jerry Steve and Mark mm-hmm. and Paul I want to talk about Paul specifically because I'm a bit in love with him me too like, he's almost like you know like I, I always he's think a real I'm, bear well I always think I'm a big beardy bloke mm-hmm. and like I look at him and I'm like I got nothing on this guy <laughs> he's played by Travis, Travis Robinson and I just want to like a picture of this now hopefully you guys will see what we look we all look like soon Mm. We're gonna do a hopefully a little photo shoot, but I just want to pitch Ruby to pitch this. Imagine watching me and Manny and Travis Robinson all having a big bear hug. Uh. Think of the <laughs> hair and the beard and the <laughs> bigness and the. I'm a little bit turned on. Oh, Ruby! <laughs> <laughs> How did I know you were gonna take it down that avenue? Yeah. Well, you tapped into a kink. What can I say? Oh, you said the word kink <laughs> for a while, actually. But yeah. I, 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 Ruby like definitely said something here as well. Like when like all of them were at the campfire, she was like, "I really don't want any of these to die." Yeah, you know, I really like big and beardy men. Like I've, got, I've grown accustomed to them. Looking at both of us, <laughs> like, I, actually, I didn't want anything bad to happen to these guys. They made me like, protect. I just, I, I basically want to watch a Homes Under the Hammer where they just build a house, <laughs> flip it, and then we're all like, "Oh, go on, let's hope they all make a decent profit." Well done, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. I was I found myself really hoping and praying for a happy ending for these guys and yeah, it well, may or not may not have happened. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, I mean, I mean, it, 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 it doesn't all go well. I think we no. can we can say that, no. you know. But say, uh, yeah, we again, we will hush, 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 yeah. hush. Do you guys want to look at the posters? There's yes. two. Yes, gimme, gimme. Okay, so there's Ruby's one and there is Manny's one. All right, okay. Oh, okay, mate, I fucking love mine. Yeah, I'm a big fan of mine too. This is delish. All right, you describe yours first. Okay, so this is actually quite hard to describe. We've got a really beautiful... I don't know what the uh, medium is they've used there. Is that like that, 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 that chalk? Is, it looks like pastel, doesn't pastel. it? Pastel. Yeah, oh, yeah, pastel. yeah, yeah, it's pastel. Pretty sure it's pastel. I'm not an art person, yeah. but I'm pretty sure it's pastel. And it's like we've got a lovely sort of like side drawing of of Twelve Pole Manor of the house itself, which is a gorgeous building, by the way. It's like all different sections of different mm. shapes and sizes. It looks like a classic higgledy haunted house. Piggledy. Yeah, very higgledy piggledy. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and it's set in a very barren landscape. There's nothing else around it whatsoever. And there's these big clawed hands like wrapped around it. And in the sky above is this fire sort of hellhole thing with a face coming out of it and it's just it's gorgeous i really this might be one of my favorite posters we've ever looked at i just think it's fantastic the face is demonic completely demonic it reminds me a little bit of basket case yeah when i look at that i i think of like an 80s vhs definitely you know i mean i like like it i like i i I literally i can think of so yeah like a sort of an evil dead 
type yeah. thing. It, it like yeah, it's a proper throwback to like the eighties to my Sorry mind. Sorry to interrupt, guys, but thinking about VHS, did you know Cherokee Creek is on VHS? They just released VHS. They just released it on VHS. Oh they made God. a few, spe- and it, I, I wanted to get one. They're all sold out. What? Yeah, I really wanted to That'd get one. That'd be really so, cool to own. Well, that's one. That's that's a message to Sam. If you can get this, bring it on VHS because people <laughs> clearly like that. To be fair, I. Can't remember the last time I owned a VHS player, but I might buy one if Twelve Pole gets put on VHS. Yeah, <laughs> I will make it happen. No, no, but for sure, it's certainly a throwback to like those old VHS like covers that yes. you see for like like yeah like that. That's my one. So if we look at my one, we, cl- we clearly have like a theme or a motif. It's, right. a, li- it's a little dark. I'll, I'll let you have a little peek at yeah, that. Yeah, that's that's really gorgeous. Yeah, as well. yeah. So my my one is it's a similar motif in that we've got the that the, like the house. Uh, a much darker colour scheme has been used in this but yeah we've got the house and they've kind of that, I think it's been warped a little bit mm. in order to make it look look a bit more like like off and and we have a yeah a dark hand reaching over the top of the house so it's similar in, in a sense to yours yeah. and um, but I mean yeah it's a, certainly a very good visual representation of the main threat of this movie like a, a demonic kind of a force kind of that is uh sort of like has a control over this this place and is making yeah, it evil. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I mean and I'm like for me this just it, like I mean it's just a great example of the the movie because it the film's like just taps so many classic horror loves for it me. It does. And but what I love the most about that was that this is yeah, off the name and the premise of this film is a haunted house movie, right? But it doesn't play out like a haunted house No, movie. it doesn't. It, it, it doesn't shove that down your throat and it doesn't sort of play by many. There are a couple, but it doesn't play by many of the tropes associated with yeah. a haunted house movie. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. It, it, it certainly has, has like elements of, like, of, of things, you know, which you've seen before, but... In, especially in terms of how the plot unfolds, I uh-huh. do, I do, gen, yeah, I, I do agree. It doesn't use the same kind of tropes and the same kind of like devices that you'd usually find in those kinds of films. Exactly, it, and it's so it's like it's fifty percent that, fifty percent like yeah, um, haunted house, but it's also fifty percent kind of s- slasher, I guess. Yeah, yeah, but it yeah, doesn't yeah. at the same time. It doesn't feel like a slasher movie. Like it, it, yeah. it doesn't play by those rules. It kind of mashes them all together to create something really quite unique. Well, that's the thing I was thinking. Like the whole time, you are guessing like. So what is happening? What is what is doing this? Mm-hmm. And like throughout, I, we can't give anything away. And you guys check me <laughs> if I say anything. But like, yeah, I'm watching. Told, I'm like, watching. <laughs> we get led down so many different avenues that, that at the end I was just like, oh, what's going on? And then like you get like you do get a final like, oh, okay. But that leads to more questions, but answers questions. But I, I like thinking about the questions. It's like it, it's just it's just so like. It's different, but done from something that we all know. Mm. We all know our we all know our haunted house. Films, yeah. but he's just Sam and everyone on the crew have just gone like, you know what? Fuck doing the same thing that everyone else does. Let's have our house, but make something fresh and just yeah. yeah. And there are some real surprises in this that I did not see coming. Yeah, no, le- legit. There are like there are a few turns that are taken where you go, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> where we're literally that's what. Yeah, we yeah, no, no. We, there were a couple of moments where like th- this is not an exaggeration. We all went. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yeah, there are a few things that happen. At that, least three separate occasions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At happen. least yeah. It, it, it is. Yeah, no, it, it definitely comes straight out of with some hard left turns uh-huh. a couple of times, which. I mean, it, it's an essential in horror, really. You know, what I mean, you should never sure. feel as you should never feel as though you can predict what like the way things are going to unfold. And every time you feel as though you might be able to with this, nah, mate, not at all, <laughs> not at all. Yeah, and as Rob alluded to a little bit earlier, this actually made me fully jump, and I don't mean twitch. I no, don't no, mean no, no. Go. I was I sitting. Next, I was sitting next to Ruby, and I literally felt the fucking cushions like move. Back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, we yeah we're definitely not talking about that scene in the hopes that it might like, scare the shit out of someone else. I know, uh, and also I don't want to ruin it. We can't ruin it, but like, and that's a real that's really hard for me because like I really want to talk about that scene. Like I, as we've said a lot, you know, I don't I'm not made to jump easily, no. and it really made me jump, and I'm I'm so all for that. Like, thank you guys for giving yeah. me that that small pleasure. <laughs> I've got two things to talk about before we do our words. Now, one of them I know we do this in our main episodes, but I just want you guys to guess. I, oh, this is from the IMDb page, so I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to go on it. How much do you reckon this cost to make? Oh. oh. Now, we're not going to take into the fact of buying the actual house. Okay. So, just how right. much it took to make the film. Man, I don't know. Just, just, just off the top of your head. No, There's no points off the grabs. Completely randomly. I'm going to say, oh, I don't know. Uh, 
eight thousand pounds. Cool. I'm gonna go. Oh, sorry, it would be in dollars. dollars. Sorry, it would be in sorry, dollars. Sorry, it would sorry. be in dollars. <laughs> eight, 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 I'm I'm gonna maybe go with three hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Well, it, that's a surprise because it is it's five thousand. Five thousand. Oh, yeah. Oh, this, took five, five, this took five thousand. Five thousand estimated Jesus. budget on IMDb. Yeah. Fucking hell. No, yeah. I, I I mean I I mean I knew it wasn't gonna be he, like a huge budget production, but man, that has got to be the definition of value for money yeah well this is true <laughs> like, you get so like, much out of this love goes in so much into oh, making something yeah. good it's, it's like it's like your grandma's best food that she makes you ask how do you do it she's like make it with love and like <laughs> this horror film like you're gonna be like sam how do you do this like i just chucked a whole load of love in it and i made everyone else love what we were doing and yeah this is the warm cookies fresh out of the oven of horror movies it really 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 <laughs> is and <clears throat> I w- I w- one more thing before we do our words is um this has got a really good trailer. The reason why we asked Sam in yeah, the has. Glam episode is we all watched the trailer for this. And if yeah, if you've listened to the Glam episode, you'll know that I asked him in a cheeky kind of like, go on, send us a screener for this one. And he did. And the trailer's <laughs> really good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I specifically remember watching that trailer and, and, and like being like, Oh, well, this looks because it, it, you know, even even from the trailer, it was like evident that it was like like some of the shots they used in the trailer were really creepy. I remember being really impressed and intrigued by it, and it's uh, it is a genuine delight to say that they did not use all the best bits in the trailer, which not is <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean. They, they didn't at all. So, but yeah, no, it, like um, you should definitely check that trailer out. I mean, if it it, it will definitely get your juices flowing. It does what a trailer should do, which is make you want to watch the movie. Like we went to when we went to see us, I think it was the, the other Pet the Cemetery other day. Trailer, there was trailer. a trailer for Pet Cemetery, which I had purposely avoided up until that point. Obviously, you can't really avoid it in a movie theater. And it just kind of did my head in because I was like, if you hadn't seen the original Pet Cemetery, all of the major plot points of the movie would be completely ruined for you just by yeah, watching that trailer. It literally, you literally like got all of the plot, all of, yeah, all of the major of bits uh, of the of the story were literally just played out in front of you. Yeah, like like literally like the like, like little. It's yeah. like a highlight reel of the entire film. Uh huh. It's ridiculous. It I is mean, absolutely crazy. I mean, I always go like for me the the, the perfect uh, horror trailer um, is is the one for the first Alien movie, which I mean, I'm biased, obviously. Well, that's like I've, super. Super, super, yeah, but um, literally, it's just the egg, and, 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 it, and it zooms in on the egg, and it opens, and it fades back, and then you've got the in space, no one can hear you scream. Yeah. So you're just, so you're just wondering, what the fuck's in that egg? Man? Yeah. And you, you and know they it's knew they had a fucking good film on their hands, so they knew that yeah, yeah exactly. it, it was gonna work. But point, way. Point, point being, man. Don't put all your shit in your trailers. I don't know if there are going to be any Hollywood executives or anybody in the industry <laughs> actually listen to this. But if there is, right, listen to me and listen to me fucking close. <laughs> Stop doing this shit. <laughs> I am so fucking bored of knowing exactly what's going to happen oh, yeah. when I've seen all of it in a movie. But that's exactly why the people who made this, who made 12 Pole, yes. knew what they were doing. because they put, say, they, take a leaf out of Sam's book, make yeah. a trailer like theirs, and then make a movie like theirs too. Because yeah. Yes, it is on that money. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right, so let's do our words. Now, I'm going to combine two words into one word for me, because I have to. It's gonna. I'm going to say it really quick. My word is fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Because this film is fucking sick. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, all I'm, that's all I'm saying. I think it explains itself, to be honest with you, mate. You, you go, Ruby. I'll, uh, I'll just wrap my brain. Is that all you're going to say? That's all I need to say. Oh, okay. It was sick. I was like taking a sip. I was like waiting for you to that have a monologue. That is all I need to say. It was fucking sick. Go watch it. Okay. Um, am I allowed to just say brilliant? Can I? Can that? You, is that allowed? G- g- guys, you two are like actual gushing. I know. I am. Like, I, I, I was going to go with something like eerie or some other sort of synonym of scary, but I just don't think that kind of does it justice. Like, I, as you could probably tell, really, really enjoyed this. Um... I, you know, I'm just going to list off a few things just to make this a bit quicker, just of of what I liked about this. It had an incredible use of, like, lighting and shadow Yeah, there was was some wicked lighting in this. There were some moments where there was a shot and it would sort of take me a minute to work out what was actually in front of me. Like, I'd say to the guys, like, what is it? What's going on? What's, what is this? Like, because it was just, you know, those photos where you look, the longer you look at it, the more you see. It's kind of like that. It was just really, really clever use of light and shadow. As we've already mentioned, the music was incredible and yep. super, super eerie. I really loved the mood setting, like scenery, the lingering scenery shots that we get. Yeah, for the sure. The bit that made me jump. 
that's all I can say, but it's fantastic. It really, really is. There is some beautiful camera work. Yeah, really no, beautiful. for sure. And really different as well. They try some stuff in this, which I'm, I'm, I really support that when people just try and do something different. Like well, while fantastic. you brought up the camera work, sorry to, but while well, 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 you're on this, this is my monologue. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. But the monologues sometimes are better when also complimenting when they're not monologues. Yeah, 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 completely. But one thing I really enjoyed about the camera work specifically on this is that there were a few, like a few moments where it, where it, it sort of seemed unhinged. Like the camera work, it, it, it kind of was deliberate. Like cause I find a lot of times in horror movies, they'll try and like have have like static shots and it will all look a little bit too clean. Whereas with this, especially once things started getting more intense, like the camera camera work started to become more like unhinged. It looked like it was sort of handy cam stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean. So and and yeah, like there were certain shots where it really like added to the the sort of the uh, urgency of what was going on. Yeah, no, it, it worked super well. Anyway, yes, please do list off more of the wonderful <laughs> quality of this movie. Thank please. you. <laughs> I mean, I have literally got a scene, a specific scene written down, um, kind of shot by shot, which I am not allowed to go through. But there is a particular scene in this, like towards the end when things start kicking off. And it's just fantastic. It is, mm. I keep saying fantastic. Brilliant was my actual word, but I can't throw enough fucking adjectives at this. Um, there are some really awesome, grimy, almost Texas Chainsaw-esque shots in this as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. Where yeah. you've got, like, the... Oh, I'm not going to spoil it. Okay. They're, they're Texas Chainsaw-esque. That's all I'm going to say. That's all you need to know. And you will see what I mean when you watch this movie, because you are going to watch this movie. Yeah, mate. Um, there's also a fantastic use, brilliant use, of building site-style weapons. Yeah. Yeah. Which I had so much time for. Like, it, we don't have your typical big old knife in this. Or, like, I mean, or just one particular weapon used the whole way through. There's some really imaginative, imaginative it's use. It's stuff that you would find in a house you're trying to flip. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so even down to the weaponry, it is so believable. This was just clearly made by people who love horror just as much as I do, just as much as we do. Yeah, yeah, And I think I that's really what it comes down to, is like they know what they're doing, but also why they're doing it. And it's because they love this shit and they want to do it for people who love it too. So I just want to say thank you. And it was fucking brilliant. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, I've been trying to think of my words and I'm, I'm just trying to like go through all the su super... Is it superlatives or superlatives? Superlatives. <laughs> or, like there aren't... There, like there really aren't like any amount of superlatives that I can't throw at this. So it's just kind of trying to like just, just narrow down all of the complimentary words that I can think of. <laughs> um... For me, I think I'm just going to have to say, like, intense. Because mm. I, I don't like, for me, the, 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 the film genuinely cultivated a very intense vibe. Like, like for, for, and for me, like, I, I, I like tone. Overall, in, in, in my horror movies, the thing that will take, take a movie to the mountains, for me personally, is tone. Um, obviously, there's other things that, I, that there has to be usually, and it absolutely ticks all those boxes, but... This film had a really, really, really unbelievably oppressive atmosphere over everything else. Over, um, but it was also intense in its action. It was intense in its it, its like execution. Um, yeah, no, there there was just a, a constant, uh, both underlying and also very prevalent sense of like proper intensity in this. Yeah, and, um, I, I, I I failed to mention that atmosphere. Like the atmosphere is there from day dot. And yeah, 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 yeah. It really is. It, it, even like it, even at points at which like it that we, where it does sort of die down a little bit, and there's a bit more space to sort of explore the characters and the surroundings and all these sorts of things. It, you know, it it never just. I should probably say this like Nicolas Cage. It never just goes away. <laughs> you know, like 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 it, like there that 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 atmosphere, that that like constant the, the sense of dread is always like lingering in the background and then comes straight to the foreground and uh, kicks you in the teeth. Yeah, it's great. Oh yeah. So yeah, thank you, Sam, for thank that. You. And thank you to everyone that worked on Twelve Pole and yes. I can't wait for the DVD to come out. <laughs> And now, yeah, yeah, mate. All of our listeners go on YouTube. We would have posted the, the the link so you can see the trailer. But go on YouTube, type in Twelve Pole Manor, find the trailer, watch it for yourself, and get ready because it's going to be so good when it comes out. Uh huh. So for the review of the episode, we have one on our uh, on a House of Wax episode, oh, which okay. is from Ghost Nation, which is just thought this was brilliant. 
Thank you. Aww. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy getting thanked for, for, for doing a podcast. It fucking it's is. It yeah, fucking no, no. Is. Th- thank you for using your ears to listen to us. <laughs> yeah. And then using your fingers to write to us. <laughs> thank you for it all. Thank you for your body parts. <laughs> no. We love your body parts. Yeah, no, you, you really are trying to sound serial killery as fuck this episode, <laughs> aren't you? Now, we were going to tell up you... On me. <laughs> what Manny's guilty pleasure film was going to be, but he hasn't got one yet, and you're going to explain <laughs> why, you little shit. Well, uh, I've been trying to think of a movie, so my, my, my first, uh, like, I, we were going to bring on, I was going to bring on initially, uh, the 2004 or 5 classic, I can't remember which exact year, See No Evil, starring Kane, mm. the, uh, the wrestler who looks like a brick shit house who will beat up your grandma. <laughs> um, why your grandma? Because, he mate, he, he, mate he, I mean, he could beat up anyone, but just so you really fucking hate him, he just to hit your grandma around just the Just for the psychological test. Yeah, yeah, just, right. just to fuck you up. You know what I mean? I'm not going to beat you up. I'm going to I'm gonna wreck your nan, and you're going to watch. He looks like a, he looks like a, an evil bastard, is what I'm saying. I was going to go for that, but unfortunately, um, these two and me all really like it. We do. And obviously the That's whole... That's a guilty pleasure for all of us. Yeah, exactly. The whole point of this segment is that it's meant to be something which I bring in which I think is great which the other two yeah. think is less great and they're gonna like grill me about it and I'm gonna defend my position which to be um, fair isn't easy like the ones I think we chose Rob and I probably are one of the only ones that you know worked yeah. that we don't we yeah, have a yeah, lot of yeah. options so uh, it's, it's so, so I'm I'm gonna have to the next time I have some free time just bury my head in my DVD collection and go <laughs> sniffing you know what I mean and I'll try and find something which I know in my heart of hearts is a piece of shit, <laughs> but I just love it anyway. So yeah, by but we'll announce it on Twitter, and then um, yeah, by next episode, we'll uh, you'll hear all the guys like absolutely tear me a new yeah. one. It's just gonna, make it work, girl. Yeah, yeah, and, it'll be good. And on that one, also you get to hear Ruby's three picks for a debate episode, yeah. and the winner of that next episode will decide out out of those three. Mm. So, and that's actually a good segue to Twitter. If you want to know what the next one's gonna be. Find it on our Twitter, mm-hmm. which is at Watch Horrorpod. We also do all of the promotion stuff. The the trailer for this will be on there. The next debate shit will be on there. Everything comes through our Twitter. And if you want to check out something else on Let's Watch Horror Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, come and follow us on Instagram at Let's Watch Horror Pod, and I believe it's the same on Facebook. Yep, and yeah. if you want to do yep. what Sam did and get in touch with us about doing a film for you guys and reviewing one of your indie horror films, it's Let's Watch Horror at gmail.com. Do it. Now, thank you once again to Tommy Musgrove for an amazing artwork that we have, <laughs> and we'll see you next one. Goodbye. Love you. Yummer. <laughs>